uh, Menatec has been uh, regular in uh, participating in Auto Mechanica, uh, where we use this opportunity to uh, uh, introduce any new innovation we make and uh, new products and uh, new launches as well. So that's what we do. I think this is our uh, perhaps fourth or fifth consecutive participation here in Auto Mechanica. Uh, every time uh, the show gets bigger and uh, looks like our presence here also is getting bigger. Uh, uh, that's which is good because uh, we have our presence here in Europe uh, since last three years uh, by having our own Manatec Europe uh, company here. We also have a warehouse in Belgium. So it uh, requires a lot of uh, commitment to this market, European market. So Manatec that way has uh, uh, through our presence here, uh, introduce all these products and uh, we'll have to show our commitment in our own way. Uh, this exhibition helps us in uh, receiving our customers predominantly from Europe. Uh, it's a reassurance for them that uh, on our commitments and uh, that, is, that is why we are here. And we also look at various technologies that any new technology that has come up in our line of uh, business and uh, we uh, go back and work on uh, what we could do. Uh, and uh, also be a head of technology uh, sometimes. Um, having said that, uh, we also won an innovation award for our uh, 3D truck aligner uh, back in uh, 2022 uh, and uh, Auto Mechanic Award for Innovation. And uh, 20, 2022, no, 2019, I think. Uh, so uh, that's an area where uh, we had, and uh, still uh, the patented uh, technology of the 3D wheel alignment is the only one in that segment of uh, industry where uh, we find a lot of partners to work with now uh, and also we have a lot of opportunity to talk to some of the leading leading automotive manufacturing companies here. So that's what we do and uh, this is very exciting for us. We want to now take it forward and uh, strengthen our presence here with our cutting edge technology products So and also our presence in Europe uh, directly. So. All these are reasons for us being here and continuing our journey here. Uh, we are once again focusing on uh, the uh, HCV segment uh, for this. Uh, for that, that is going to be our focus because um, that's a, that's a, that product is uh, innovative. It adds a lot of value uh, to the important ecosystem stakeholders. Uh, like the garage owner, the uh, fleet owner, and also the, the technicians which is working on, on the vehicle to do an alignment. So uh, such an uh, important innovative uh, uh, product that is, it has a positive impact everywhere. And that obviously becomes uh, our priority. Uh, we, we would like to take this uh, advantage to uh, the nook and corner of the industry uh, compared to what they are doing now. Because I'm talking about uh, 12 times uh, faster uh, uh, wheel alignment as a whole and uh, 36 fa times faster uh, uh, run-out measurement uh, in uh, the alignment technology. So, uh, which is, which is uh, going to, in essence, uh, what is generally being done for one hour uh, wheel alignment, we can just finish it in 20 minutes now and move on. So, when you have such a cutting edge technology, uh, you've got to really commit uh, your time and resources to that, uh, to take uh, the technology to the nook and corner of the market so that the whole ecosystems can benefit. So, if you convert in terms of hours, the number of hours a fleet owner is going to save by ha by using our wheel alignment system is going to be predominantly high. So that's going to directly result uh, in terms of uh, savings for him. So there is there is uh, overall 360 degree uh, value addition to the ecosystem stakeholders, and uh, so we continue to work on that. Just a quick history of um, how it all started. Uh, we've been doing exports uh, for more than about, uh, almost about 12 plus years now. And uh, we've been exporting across the globe and uh, all from India. And at some point, uh, like I said, you know, we have to in in increase our commitment to uh, some of the markets. And uh, that is where we had decided to uh, strengthen our export presence uh, in uh, the European market uh, and the US market. So uh, we opened our first U.S. office back in 2021 uh, in uh, Houston and uh, we have a big warehouse there. We also have our office in uh, Houston now. It's being manned by our own uh, setup. So that's uh, on one side. On the other side, we also have uh, uh, another uh, office here in Belgium 
with uh, our own uh, warehouse and our own office. So these two offices are going to cater to the uh, European markets and the US office will cater to the entire uh, USA, Mexico and uh, the and uh, and Canada. So this is our plan. And uh, we also have stepped up our efforts by having local uh, presence in uh, Brazil through our own, let's say, our own uh, resident operations uh, in Brazil, in uh, uh, Middle East, and uh, and now shortly we are going to have another presence in uh, Canada. So what we are trying to do is, all along we've been trying to export from India. Uh, we travel from India, trying to reach the globe, and that way, uh, obviously, the time taken is much much longer. So how do we uh, reach? Uh, markets faster so the market access has to be faster so we thought this is the best way to reach faster by having a local presence there. so in uh, in uh, two major countries we have our local presence through our own bureaus in other countries we have through resident operations so this is a strategy we have adopted in the last three or four years and it seems to be paying off well uh, because uh, obviously the in these areas, our export growth curve has been on an upward trend. So we are showing the growth and uh, hopefully uh, that's going to be our way forward. Uh, from exports, uh, the current percentage is about 35%. And I expect that to go up to 50% in the next one or two years. And uh, with uh, since the, all these presents were set up now, I see a sudden uh, ramp up in terms of volumes in, uh, from the third year onwards. So from that point, uh, the exports percentage will be much higher compared to the domestic. So from the third year onwards, uh, the percentage should really be higher than the domestic percentage. Mergers and acquisitions have been uh, uh, evolving in the last uh, decade, I would say. Uh, in our industry, the equipment industry, uh, we saw uh, M&A happening uh, maybe somewhere mid of uh, 2000s with uh, one company, one I would say a private equity company acquiring some of the uh, important companies. So that is when the whole idea of M&A started. But in the last five or ten years, I think um, so many companies were bought over, and uh, some companies bought other companies and things like that. So I, I, I think you know it's more like consolidation happening. And uh, also, it's uh, more like opportunity uh, sale or you know things like that. So uh, eventually, I think the companies that buy other companies uh, see some value when uh, they acquire another company, and uh, that's that's how things are happening. There are some companies that uh, uh, chose to remain as their own entity because you know uh, they have their own uh, innovative progress, they have their own growth uh, perspective. So, uh, in that sense, I think this uh, keeps happening and uh, as far as we are concerned, uh, as of now, though we've had some opportunities on uh, the either space, uh, like what you mentioned, uh, but uh, we, um, we were uh, focusing on our priorities in terms of getting out some products that is going to be different, that is going to uh, be cutting edge and uh, where uh, people find a lot of value. Now, today we are on a position with the in, uh, the invent of our uh, you know the HCV alignment uh, machines, so we are in a position where we have started looking at some of the strategic diversifications, like what I mentioned. So uh, I will share with you some details when it comes to it, but uh, we always keep open. It could be anything. It could be a joint venture. It could be a technology transfer or licensing agreement. It could be anything. So we are looking at strategic options at this point of time and uh, I'm sure uh, there, is, there is a lot of opportunity for that. India is the fastest growing in the world today. And uh, if I'm not wrong, India's third largest automotive market, something like that. So um, uh, I could see uh, that in the field in terms of uh, the growth in automotive market. Automotive market is growing pretty well. Uh, we see a lot of foreign companies setting up uh, presence there. And in our industry, it's growing. It's, um, you can see every company's sales is growing. And uh, the business is uh, good. And we hope this remains for the next few years at least. And um, 
while uh, the market is growing, uh, what happens is com companies are uh, scrambling to uh, bring in new products and also strengthen their presence. So that is exactly what we are trying to do. So in that sense, I would like to uh, also tell you that we, uh, we diversified into automotive electronics space, and, uh, which I spoke to you about a few years back. And we have gotten into the TPMS uh, designing and uh, manufacturing. We are the first company in India to design and manufacture a wide range of TPMS solution to cater to two-wheelers, three-wheelers and uh, uh, passenger cars and also for the truck segment. So we are working a lot in that area and we uh, we are going to be having uh, the largest automation plant in India for manufacturing TPMS because it goes to uh, the uh, as a OEM fitment, right? So obviously you need a setup that could uh, facilitate mass manufacturing. So that uh, we will have uh, down the line another three or four months and um, with that, uh, our diversification on um, the automotive electronics and uh, some of the defense areas uh, are completely not relevant to what we are doing with the uh, parent company. So, uh, since the economy is doing well, uh, we also have the confidence to invest in those areas. So, that is exactly what we are doing and we are going to be adding more and more products uh, in this particular space. So yeah, that's about it. Uh, from Manatech, uh, like I said, this diversification, it's the new company is called Manatech Mobility uh, Private Limited. So that's another area where we are focusing uh, equally and uh, uh, we hope to do uh, or we hope to share some important news with you on uh, that space uh, shortly. Um, the tire pressure monitoring systems. Oh, okay. Okay. PPMS right. and also some uh, products in uh, central inflation for defense, uh, defense applications. So uh, it's completely not related to the one we do. So, and we are uh, planning to add GPS to that shortly. And uh, we are also planning to get into the area of uh, uh, steering. The steering wheel, some sensor applications related to that. So there are some exciting new product ideas that are coming up. But currently, uh, we want to scale up what we have done already, that is the TPMS solution and uh, the inflation solution. So that is where we are working.